pillows. Wait, is I know, I thanks. Know, really this nice. Very, uh, like, these look really nice pillows. And these candles, I mean. So romantic. I want you to fade to black. Just like, like to fade in, in, and then fade to black. And then, wait, and then fade in, and then fade to black. I want top billing. Yeah, it's Shiri Mahondra. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tell you how this goes. It's Shiri <laughs> Mahondra. Thank you so much. You. How about it's Shiri and introducing Mahondra, <laughs> you know? Like, it's starring Shiri no, Appleby. Yeah. Well, we had this the first season, and it was like... We didn't know if we were going to get picked up. Yeah, so that was exciting. Right. To come back. And then we got picked up for 13. Oh, yeah, and the WB decided that they kind of wanted to, like, retool the show and make it a little more ass-kicking, like, Buffy-oriented. Yes. Oriented. Right. But they and thought that was at the end of first season. That was... Well, that was, like, the what to look forward to in the oh. next season. We're oh. going to go more. And, like... All of a sudden, our wardrobe was like insane. Like, like Katie was in like full leather, like oh, pants yeah, and bustier, right, and like I, I had like the mini skirts. You know what I mean? And everyone just looked so like we were dolled up. I think with me, they were trying to make me look a little bit sexier, not like not like overtly, overtly sexy, sexy yeah. but just like she had matured a little bit, so my hair was bigger, a little bit more makeup on. The shirts were just like showing a little more skin, but they still kept me pretty pure. Really innocent. It was like the typical thing, you know, one minute you're 15 and you're, you know, and the girl, next minute you don't you're know 16. yet that you're yeah. like sexual or sexually appealing in any way, and then you're 16 and you're kind of like Working flirting with the idea. More. Right. So that was my trans, well, that was not mine, but that was Liz's transformation. Yeah. You're like, I've always been dead sexy. I'm always the hottest girl on set. I don't it's know. It's just what's like the a given. <laughs> what was your transformation? My transformation is always like. To, to like, like underwear. No, like and wearing then like underwear. like these big baggy pants that were like yeah. raver pants and like the short crazy hair to like these like extensions and like the short skirt and like boots and it was painful. I realized what it was like to be um, At the beginning, not hot but in hot people's clothing. <laughs> but, <laughs> and it wasn't fun. You know, it's so funny that we like put on all these clothes at the beginning of the season, you think it's really fun, and then come oh, and November, you're, you're like in these short little skirts in the desert. And like, I remember we did this Viva Las Vegas, and I was in this like, you know, I mean, I was still like letting, you know, being like Maria and going full out and overdone, and you know, just something I wouldn't normally be doing myself. And I had my hair in this like flip thing with these like big curls, red lipstick and this outfit, and Applebee sits across from me and she goes, Delfino, you, know, you really go for it, don't you? <laughs> I'm like, she's like, you really, I like that, you know, you still get in the outfit and you just still do the hair and you just oh, go for it. No, Mahandra you know? just walks on set, she's got like her book, her like really dark book that she's yeah, reading. Yeah, God knows what. And she's know? just like on set, like working, I'm just like, what, all the time? You're okay with it all the time. We went to Hollywood Park to yeah. shoot that. That was Vegas. Mm -hmm. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Margarita Salt. You kind of you know, want, need something to do for the characters. So whatever, you, if they can like, if they're double jointed, you're like, let's make an episode about it, you know? <laughs> and um, it was either like, you know, she dances ballet or she sings. The, the singing is cooler with the kids. Let's do a singing thing, you know? So at first it was like, all right, I'll sing. But then it kind of became a problem because I actually have like a singing thing in real life. And it was really like confusing people. Like they'd buy my CDs hoping to hear like Roswell songs. We start getting really annoyed with who, you know, with our, our love interest stories. It starts getting boring for us, like kissing the same actor or whatever. So we decide together as like a unit that we want to tell Jason how, what he should write. And we tell him that he should do like a cousin thing, you know? And he did it. Mm -hmm. He had my cousin come on. He ne the thing is, he didn't follow through because you were supposed to have your cousin come on for me. Right. That never worked out. I'd complain that, like, Michael was so mean to her, you know, and she'd, like, take it. It's such a bad influence. He was so just, he was disabled, that poor Michael. Why I mean, couldn't these really... poor aliens treat us well? I know, they really, they just really were little buggers. They really, yeah. That's why I said to Jason Cams, I'm like, you have to give Liz, like, a different guy or have her do something to on like her own. Because this is herself. crazy that yeah. these poor girls are, like, chasing these guys and are not treating them well, like, yeah. all around. Like, these, and I said to them, like, you haven't created dumb characters. Like, both these characters are, like, really independent. Like, Liz is really into, like, science, and Maria's really into music, yeah. and, like, being artistic, and, like, yeah. we didn't create weak characters. So that was o my only issue, really, was that, like... Yeah, and you feel bad, like, having an issue at all, because it's, like, it's their story and this and that, but there's times where you have to kind of take responsibility for what you're putting out there and what young girls are taking from it, and, mm -hmm. and especially if you, you know, both Appleby and I would 
you know, like read our fan mail and, you know, like understand what the the reaction was. And if you see that it might be influencing someone in the wrong way, you kind of want to do something about it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, you know, a lot of the times people say like, oh, you know, you want to see Liz happy. It's like this poor girl is like running around crying all the time. Human beings, we change and grow and go all over the place. And I think it's important to play characters that resemble that as well. That's it wasn't like last... complaining, it was just like, here's our input here's, about what yeah. might work better since we're paying attention to these characters in this situation. Mm. They were definitely responsive and Very obviously, much, yeah. like the two of us are saying, like they, they listened to us and they, you know, gave those characters those opportunities. And then eventually I got Clean Crawford. And Brody. With, like, hot music. Yeah, Brody, that was weird. Yes. I, was like <laughs> I was like a 16 year old, like going to visit this, you know, 30 something year old man with a child who owned a UFO museum. <laughs> when they had the Courtney character, like, you know, oh, seduce right. Michael was terrible. I was like, Michael, you know, because like he, he gave into it and he did like fool around with her or whatever. And it was the same kind of feeling like when, when Tess came on and the Max and Tess thing, it was that same kind of thing of like, no, you know? I swear, because I never knew that she was coming. We were at a press conference. Yeah. And the producers told all the press that they were bringing another what girl onto it? the show. And I was we were like, sitting there like, Oh, sorry, oh, I didn't mean to what? interrupt anything. And, and like, not only, like, just a guest star, but, like, there's going to be another lead, you know, on the show. And you're like, huh? I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. Okay. You know, and you're just going along with it. And then as soon as she comes on, Emily's a really, you know, really sweet girl. It was just the idea that, like, this relationship was sort of, like, oh. being tampered with. It's weird. It feels, like, real, and oh, you get very protective uh, over your character. Sure, I like, still have, like, issues with it now. Yeah, it's, like, I still have issues with it, like, too. cheating on you. That's, that's how it feels to me, too. I'm like, that whole killing Alex thing was so, that whole thing was so disturbing. We really thought he was like dead. Remember he'd come on the set, we'd be like, Colin! Oh my God, you know, it was, it was Colin such a bummer. He was such a good guy to have on set and he was like a so friend. So much fun. And then, and then the then idea that you just, it, the show was like going to such a degree that was, you know, it's changing. It's like we're not just getting rid of him, but like we gotta make him dead. Die. And like, in a weird way. You know, the Voice writers, it's like they have so much to that yeah. is of concern, and because it started becoming science fiction, <clears throat> it was more uh, for them. It seems like they were just coming up with like plot points or like trying to come up with this whole theology and how all of this stuff was going to make sense. They were trying to create an entire world. It yeah, was, was a network, network thing, note. you know. It was a network. These, I think, they were having a lot of success with Buffy and Angel and those kinds of shows that I yeah. think they were trying to make Roswell into that same sort of. That's more success. about. I mean, I'm not personally a science fiction fan, but like, luckily, my character sort of was like, I think we should do this. Yeah, and that it was works great. out yeah. every single time. So it was kind of fun to be the person that like had the answers to everything. But um, I am definitely was I'm more in favor looking back on the episodes that have to do with the love story. I liked that episode because I thought it was just really romantic and that episode remind me of like why I fell in love with the show to begin with, like why the pilot gets to you and I thought that episode sort of was back on that path again. You're the love of my life. Everyone else is gonna be second best. I'll never be another you. Didn't he look like Tom Cruise in Magnolia? Totally. I think he kind of liked the idea of playing another character. And I also like that episode because it's just not so, there's just not so much like technical, like mumbo jumbo. You really like got into the characters. Yeah. And it was nice to see that like Nick's character was involved and he was like really, you know, they were being playful and giving towards each other. And you never, you didn't see those two characters interact like that. I think ever up to that point or much so afterwards either. He's, he's hilarious, hysterical. but he just talks about anything and it's funny. Yeah, he's a lot about like telling sex jokes. He, yeah, it's all about like how uncomfortable, you know, the situation could be. Nick is pro. He's very funny, but he's a really big music buff and I remember he would always ask the camera department, they have this um, like air squirter to clean out the camera. So he'd always, he always wanted to take him home so he could blow his CDs after he'd play them and like blow his CD player to make sure that like all the dust would get. He's like a music fanatic. God, I feel like we're talking about a different world. Can you imagine, we started that show five years ago and we met like six years ago. I know, it's crazy. You like, know, like it's time. wonderful that we're sitting here and talking and I'm like we're still talking about it. But it's like a testament to how entertaining the show was for people, like people still, stop us and ask us about the show. Well, at least for me, 
and I'm, I feel like for you too, maybe it was like the first, like it was like my first bigger thing. Yeah, and it was so it's like debut. you know, yeah, it really was. So if you like, if you're like looking at like a timeline, it's like all the way at the beginning. So the idea yeah. that like wherever I am, you sort of still go back to that. Yeah, and that we're still sitting here and talking about it, it just sort of blows me away.